An SLR or a systematic literature review is a clear and methodologically sound plan for the process of identification, retrieval, selection, appraisal, and weighting of published data. So I know that's a mouthful, but it has several steps. And it has long been the gold standard process for research, especially in the academic arena. In fact, the SLR process is so integral to the work we do every day for our clients that we've built a large SLR team comprised of medical librarians and trained literature reviewers to conduct literature searches across multiple databases, screen the literature returned from those searches, identify the relevant data, and extract those data into tables. That's one example. Those data gleaned from published literature are used by companies in many different ways. For example, our Criterion Edge team has provided SLR services to our clients for regulatory compliance requirements, such as what's very topical right now, the medical device and IVD manufacturers, <clears throat> excuse me, to enable them to align with the new EU MDR and the uh, EU IVDR. SLR has also helped our clients with key corporate initiatives, such as to develop white papers or other clinical marketing materials, to assess the current therapeutic landscape of their drug or device, or to gain insights into off-label use, hazard assessment, et cetera. Um, often SLR is used to, and this is a growing field, to augment and automate the company's post-market surveillance activities. That's a really interesting way to effectively and efficiently use systematic literature review services for a regulatory requirement. So in short, companies should consider con conducting a systematic literature review when there is insufficient manufacturer held data to address an organizational need or regulatory requirement. Not at all. Internet searches differ from a systematic literature search in a number of key ways. First, the functionality of an internet search is very limited. Whereas using a robust search platform, and we use a platform called ProQuest Dialog. So there are multiple search platforms out there that you can access. But using this type of platform allows the full functionality of SLR searches, the MeSH terminology, the search syntax, and that stepwise organization of the full search protocol. Almost none of this functionality is available with an internet search. Also, I'm, I'm not even done. There's the issue of content accessibility using the limited databases available on the internet. Next, internet searches are not considered reproducible, which means by notified bodies and other regulatory agencies, which means that the results could vary from search to search. That's what reproducibility means, is that a regulatory authority, a notified body in the medical device space, they want to see a full uh, literature search uh, protocol. And, and their test is, if we ran exactly the same protocol, would we get nearly the same results? That test can't be passed with the internet. That is that, that it would fail. And thus the whole literature search um, and the, and the articles included in that search on an internet search would come into question. So that reproducibility factor is very big. So that because the results can vary from search to search and if you're pulling data, then, that, then the regulatory authorities are worried, are going to worry that the search is not reproducible, thus the data change from search to search. And that is a, a non-starter for them. Lastly, there's that critical issue of, of, of objectivity. Internet searches make it difficult to document your objectivity, primarily because the search terms and search strings are on the internet are difficult to document. Whereas the documentation of an SLR search protocol is very straightforward and very clear. So that reproducibility factor is very important in the SLR search protocol. So in the end, 
the decision on whether to use the internet or a search platform really depends on the purpose of the search. If it's regulatory, if it's to collect data officially, you should not be using the internet. Yes, that's a great question because these established best practice processes are complex and evolving. First, I would say that a well-trained team is key to success. The medical information librarian, which heads the team, should be experienced in the specific demands of corporate pharma and medical device literature searches, which can have different requirements from those searches conducted in the academic setting. And in the screening and, I should say, the screening and review team must be very well trained to identify and extract relevant data from the published material. material. Last, we have established a quality control process to mitigate as far as possible that in inevitable human error factor that comes along with every process that is so human centric such as this. But you asked about SLR best practices. We're seeing how current best practice is evolving with the adoption of automation and artificial intelligence into this field. Those new technologies are disrupting the human-centric process of literature screening and the identification of relevant data points for extraction. Our Criterion Edge team already uses effective industry standard automation processes that allow us to screen more efficiently, which results in shorter review times with fewer errors noted during the QC process. But we are very excited about the promise that AI holds for literature review and data identification. This is a rapidly developing field and we've got our eye on how it can be deployed in our organization in a cost-effective way to improve efficiency and produce accurate high quality search results, search and review results. Without a doubt, industry's desire and need for real world evidence has become almost insatiable. And it's really all hands to the pump for companies to support the collection management and use of real world evidence. We're exploring how Criterion Edge can participate and support in this rapidly expanding and evolving field. 